It's no small feat building a business. And when you're one of the few who remains, after so many others have disappeared, it's almost impossible not to look back and ask, how did we do it? Farmers could bring a hog in and trade it in on a used car. Now, how they, how they arrived at the value and all of that, but those used car people knew what they were doing, so they didn't lose any money on this deal. People at that time had victory gardens, and they, they preserved food and stored it in the mason jars, which is what you did. We sold those off of the, off of the showroom floor. When the city was um, sold on the fact that the only kind of police car in the, that they could ever have was a Chevrolet, uh, uh, Mr. McCray took that as a personal challenge. We took on the city council, the sheriff's department, the, the motor pool, and everybody else. And I think he enjoyed the fight more than the fact that we won and we sold him hundreds of cars. Our past is a powerful asset. It's how we remember, why we learned our lessons, and what makes us, us. Charles A. Lindbergh. Lucky Lindy, as they call him, landed at Le Bourget Airport, Paris, at 5.24 this afternoon. What a business. Putting people on the road to anywhere and everywhere. With the can-do, how-to spirit of the American entrepreneur and the hard work of those who shared that spirit. There was a fellow who kept stealing our cars and they picked, <laughs> picked him up and had him locked up and, and my father asked him why he kept coming back and stealing our cars and he just said, Mr. McRae, you've got good cars. <laughs> they shared an entrepreneurial spirit and they have um, a passion for a lot of things and the car business is a lot of things. For people like us, the car business is in our bones. Uh, Honda had a little car that looked like a roller skate. It was called a 600, and it, it was laughable. And the Honda sales uh, manager was riding around in this car trying to sign up dealers. And um, I think Mr. Cop and Mr. McRae uh, took, took it upon themselves to say, yeah, we'll, we'll try that. And from that, uh, they were able to uh, to become a, a franchise dealer and one of the most successful franchises uh, to ever uh, be in the automobile business. We learned early on that our people matter. We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched closely by intelligences greater than man. And time after time, we've made it possible for people to become who they were meant to be. My coming to the company was uh, the direct result of the fact that I could pitch a softball and Duval Motor Company, which it was known as then, had a softball team. And the rules and regulations of the league were that you needed to work for whomever you played for. I asked Mr. Scott if I could have the job as the car rental manager and he kind of laughed and told me that they had never had a manager that young before. But to go ahead and start running it until they could find somebody that could run it. And so I was still running it 13 years later and we had built the um, size of the fleet into about 125 daily rental cars, um, a fleet of rental trucks. We even had campers at the time. We rented campers, so it, it was a uh, uh, pretty big business at the time. Today, Today I, consider I consider myself, myself the, the luckiest, luckiest man, man on the face, on the of, the face of the earth. It took years to forge the kind of valued relationships we depend on, but it didn't take us long to understand the meaning of loyalty. Walter grew up in a family business. He watched his father run Duval Motor Company. Um, 
Walter then took it over started the profit sharing plan in the 1950s, which was really unheard of for small businesses and particularly automobile dealerships to actually take profit at the end of the year and put it into a plan that was shared with all the employees. And Walter always said he wanted, when somebody was with the company for 20 or more years, wanted them to retire with something other than a watch, which was traditional at the time. You were given a gold watch and retired. And that was it. He wanted them to have retirement funds available to continue. How many times were we tested over the years? The beach that we're going to land on now looks to be very hot from here. We can't see it too well from our position here on this side of the superstructure. He was a military pilot in, in uh, World War II and uh, flew in the Navy, was a, a Navy officer and and flew in the Pacific and, and, and flew an airplane that was used by the Navy to pick up uh, pilots that had been shot down in the South Pacific. He commented one time that, he, uh, that every Navy officers club he had ever been in, he never had to buy a drink because there was always someone around that maybe he had rescued or done some other favor for that, you know, figured that he owed Jack Scott. No matter what the challenge, there was always a steady hand, and our leaders pressed on. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've thought big. We've also had an uncanny way of getting there first. I had hunted rabbits in that same area. There were Chinese farms on Cassett Avenue. It was a two-lane road uh, and not very well traveled at that. But that was to be our new home and we were the first ones to be there. First day, my guys were all upset. <laughs> the phone didn't ring. Here we are out there all alone the only dealership on Cassett Avenue, even though we'd told everybody where we were moving. But on the second day, the phone started ringing, cars started selling, and our first month of operation was a record month for Duval Motor Company all the way through. In the very back of the building, there was a, a small office. It was, uh, it looked like a, a hole in the wall. And um, while the while the building was being renovated, this is where we operated out of. So uh, we became known as the Hole in the Wall Gang. We started selling cars uh, before the first shipment of Hondas ever arrived. We, there was two by fours out front. The customers were working their way through the construction and we were the back in the hole in the wall and we actually sold I believe the first entire allocation of Hondas before they ever even got here. We pre-sold. We've shown the courage to take risks and our drive has been unstoppable. Now we are sophisticated and computerized and uh, we, we got all the instruments like a car and if we read the instruments we know when we're we're doing right, we know when we're doing wrong. But in the old days, we didn't have any of those instruments because uh, there, was, there was no way to tell when you were making a mistake. It was like the old corner grocery store. The man walked along and if this was a part was missing in a bin, he ordered one, which had no relationship to whether he needed to order one or whether he'd sold one. Uh, it, was, it was a judgment call on one person's looking into a bin. Within the dealerships, there are so many moving parts. Uh, a, a general manager of a store has, has so many things that he needs to keep his eye on, uh, but it's not always readily available. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take all that information, which is uh, either stored historically, uh, which is either in a report that is somewhere that he doesn't readily have access to, and we're going to present it to him in a web-based format. So uh, there's a lot of knowledge that's within the minds of a lot of the car people today, which is somewhat tough to, to really garner, but we're going to take that logic. 
uh, put it within the system and develop a tool that will allow that logic to really be done for him. Uh, so it really will help from a training standpoint, it will help from an informational standpoint, it will help from a managerial standpoint. So it's something that we're looking forward to, to deploying and, and getting out in the field. Mr. Graham has always been ahead of the, the um, industry as far as technology goes. And getting the PCs on the employees' desks and getting them to use them, moving off of paper systems, which are sometimes very cumbersome and sometimes require a lot more people in order to, to do a certain process, I think it allowed us to grow the company. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, tear down this wall. But we've known all along that it isn't just about us. We've been very involved with the Race for the Cure with Ford. Ford has also been a very big supporter of the Wolfson's Children's Hospital. And, uh, and we started taking our employees over to the hospital to visit with the kids. And, and that really was a powerful experience. Finest fee was on the lot. Yeah, that's right. Floor mats, keys. Keys? They're going to start it. We like to think we've had an impact. They've not kept their enthusiasm just confined to the business. They've been city leaders and builders as well. It's their town. Daddy looks out that window, I said, my town, that song, he loves it. <laughs> I said, my town, feels good about it. When it, Mayor Austin was running, when Ed was running, Ed was actually running, he was a Democrat at the time, so only Democrats could vote in that race, and Republicans couldn't vote. And Walter said, well, we need to get Republicans to switch for this race so they can vote, because they'll likely vote for Ed, because he was viewed as the more conservative member. And the political consultants just kind of kept shutting him up and shutting him up and shutting him up. And so Walter forced the campaign to do a switch campaign, a switch ad. And um, about 3,000 Republicans switched from Republican to Democrat for that race, and Ed won by, I think, 2,700 votes. So, but for that, which Walter single-handedly done, because every one of those voted for, for Ed, it wouldn't have happened. Almost from the very start, one thing has never changed for us. We're family. As I can recall through the years, if ever an employee had a problem, and uh, uh, it was gonna be Mr. McRae or my father or someone like them from the company was gonna get involved in it. Uh, if you had someone hospitalized, uh, if, if they had a need, they would always step in, they would do that. My grandfather set the tone for hard work enthusiasm and you know, taking care of his family and that meant his personal family and his business family. It's a family business. And I think that kind of sums it up. It does mean something. But our past is only a beginning. We're a vital company with uncommon curiosity and a vision that's a step ahead. It's the grand opening of the magnificent all-new Duval Honda on Cassett Avenue. Yes, our new store is finally open. We're celebrating with incredible grand opening St. And so every day, our work continues. We move forward, creating new memories and breaking fresh ground. And even at this moment, we're investing in tomorrow and beyond. Companies are associations of people. We've had some long time associations with good people that, know, that basically know the business and, and, uh, and do things right. I wish everyone in life could work for the Scott McRae Group for a year. I think it would change them for the better and uh, it's been a real joy. This is where I started, this is where I want to end. Um, you know, it's, you're part of something more than a company. You're part of, a, you're part of an enterprise that, uh, that has affected generations and, and you're, you're able to protect that and preserve it and to grow it for future generations. And that's, that's something that, that you rarely get in a, in a business career. The future of Scott McRae, building on the power of our past.